everybody. Julie here from Mostly Caffeinated. I want to start this video with a bit of a statement. Um, I don't intend to turn my channel into a strictly like foster and adopt channel. My goal is still to have a general channel about motherhood and homemaking and that kind of thing. It just so happens to be that part of my parenting journey is taking me down this road. So I will still have, you know, haul videos, review videos, coffee with me's, chores with me, you know, cleaning tips, parenting tips, book reviews, all that kind of stuff. It's just that occasionally I will do a video updating you on our uh, foster and adopt journey. And then if, if the Lord sees fit to give us a child that we get to keep, uh, you will get to meet that child. It will be a long time from now if that happens. But anyway, that being said, we have decided to enter the state adoption process. Um, let me explain just a little bit. I know this varies by state, but in our state, there's something called special needs adoption, which does not actually mean that the children necessarily have like a cognitive disability or something. It means that for some reason, they are difficult to place children. They have maybe been in foster care for a long time. Perhaps they're older children, maybe they're sibling sets. Maybe they have an emotional or behavioral need that is above and beyond what is considered average. And those children can be adopted through the state at actually no cost. And that's why we're going this route. Um, we have always meant to adopt. I have wanted to adopt a child for literally 20 years since I was eight, <laughs> since I realized that adoption was a thing that everybody could do. Um, I myself was adopted as an infant, so it's a thing that's always been in my heart. But I thought that you had to go through an agency. I thought the only adoption choice was a private adoption or an agency adoption. And I am well aware that adopting a child in those ways costs upwards of $20,000. So my husband and I had discussed this before we even got married and decided that, well, when we have the money, we'll adopt a child. So, you know, when we're 40 or something, when, <laughs> when we have saved up $20,000 and then we'll adopt the child. And some friends of ours actually adopted through this special needs adoption program. And they were the ones who told me that this was even a thing that was possible. And that adopting through the state um, is actually free. <laughs> and I was like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> so we've decided to go through that program, which means that a child that we bring into our home will be a foster child at the time. So we are being licensed as foster parents because up until you literally go to the courthouse and finalize the adoption, that child is technically a foster child and you need to be a licensed foster care parent. So that being said, we had our first, I don't know, really official step. We went to like a brief training session. We filled out a form about the kinds of children that we think would work well in our family. But this was the first official thing that happened. Um, a social worker came to our house and did what she called a screening interview. And when I was trying to prepare for this screening interview, I couldn't really find anything on the internet about what it entails, what goes on at the interview, if I need to prepare anything ahead of time. So that's the purpose of this video is to help people looking for that information. What happens at this initial screening interview? Okay, I have notes in front of me that I took um, during the interview, just so I would make sure I had some points to tell you. So if I look down, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, first of all, basics. It took an hour. It was one hour pretty much on the nose. And it was not a high pressure situation. She, in fact, told us that as soon as she walked in our house. She said, you know, this isn't really formal. It's really just an informational get together. I need some basics from you and I'm here to answer your questions. And that's really what it was. She did take some notes. She had a form that she was putting some notes on, but they were only notes about what I would call very specific, but easy to answer questions. 
she asked us questions like, do you know what legal risk placement is? Uh, how did you hear about our program? What is your work schedule like? Because I'm a stay-at-home mom, she then asked, you know, how long do you intend to be a stay-at-home mom? To which I answered, at least four years. And she thought that answer was very nice. Uh, she asked about our health history and our criminal backgrounds. Not in depth, not like, have you ever had a surgery? Have you this, have you that? She just wanted to know if we had any chronic health problems that might complicate caring for children. She asked how many bedrooms and bathrooms were in our home. She was very satisfied with our answer that we had two child bedrooms and that both of our current children are the same gender and could share a room and that we had two total bathrooms. That was fine with her. A three bedroom, two bathroom home was acceptable and we already have children living in our home. She asked if we had told our extended family members yet, to which we honestly answered no. And we told her that we hadn't because we didn't want to get their hopes up. And that was considered to be a good answer. And those are really the only things she asked us. And those are the only things she wrote down any information about. Um, I know when they leave your home, either you know in their car or back at their office, they write out kind of a narrative paragraphs. Like, the family spoke this way. They seemed blah, blah, blah. Their home was yada, yada. Like, I know she's going to do that. But she didn't do that, like, in front of us. She didn't write down a whole lot. Um, other than that, now, I don't want this to be... Sorry, my eyes are itchy. I don't want this to be a barometer by which you judge your appointment because I'm sure every social worker is different. So your social worker may say nothing. They may be extremely like straight faced. That may be their version of being professional and objective. Our social worker particularly told us at that point in the interview that there was no reason for her to believe that we would not be screened in and approved for the process. And as such, she spent the next half of the interview discussing what happens next, how we complete our home study, how long things might take, um, how the legality of fostering prior to finalizing an adoption works. Now, your social worker may not go into those details. They may not be willing to say, let's assume you're accepted, let's talk further. They may be very objective and professional and want to keep every single one of their appointments exactly the same, and they may not say anything. Um, it's just like if you've ever interviewed for a job, you know, some people that you were interviewing with told you right away, you got the job, or I feel confident you will get the job. And some of them said absolutely nothing, and you still got the job. So please don't panic if your social worker does not say, I believe you'll be approved. Let's talk about the future. But ours chose to do that. And she went through you know, the basics of what's in a home study, how many classroom hours we need of different kinds of training, um, how the process of transitioning a child out of their current home into our home would go so that we can get very prepared. And I think some of why she did that was because we already have two small children. And she realizes that not only will this be a transition for our incoming child, but it will be a transition for our current children as well and so that we could get prepared as much ahead of time as possible for how this will play out so that we have time to do things like paint a bedroom and start talking to our two-year-old, three-year-old, <laughs> start talking to our three-year-old about getting a new sibling and start, you know, thinking about enrolling them in school and things like that. These long-term kinds of plans that she knows we will have to make because of our particular situation. She was extremely friendly and nice. She was nice to our dog. She was not overpowering in any way, but she also wasn't nervous or fumbling with her paperwork. The kinds of things that I've sometimes seen some professionals do who've come to my home. I've had, you know, a health insurance person come to my home. I've had a financial planner and they were always kind of nervous. They're younger people and that makes me nervous. But um, the social worker was extremely competent, very confident, but in a quiet and calm fashion. It was lovely. It was a very good meeting. And she kept repeating there is no commitment. You're not committing to anything right now. Now, in our hearts, my husband and I are very committed already. We are 100% ready to do this. But she kept reiterating that up until the moment you physically meet a child, there is no commitment. So if at any time it's suddenly not the right time for you, 
if you're working through your home study and you realize baby proofing your home would be next to impossible, of course, we've already baby proofed, but if that happens to you, it's okay. You can stop and you have a year window from this initial meeting to complete your paperwork or not. So you could take a few months off. All of a sudden, somebody needs a surgery and it's not a good time for you. Fine. You could take a few months off and start again where you left off. Um, if there's a death in your family and it's not the right time, you can start again where you left off within that year window. So she kept reassuring us, I guess, that we were not tied down to anything. We were not letting anybody down. Nobody knew we were in the program except the social workers. There's no judgment if something happens and you need to drop your application for a while. Or if you decide altogether, suddenly this is not something that you want to do. Uh, again, we're not in that position. We told her straight up, no, we're doing this. We are committed. We've already decided. We are completely convicted in our hearts that this is going to happen. But anyway, I hope that sheds a little bit of light if you are preparing your home and your family for this screening interview. I did clean, but I only cleaned about the same as I would clean for like my mother coming over. You know, I didn't absolutely positively sterilize everything. I didn't hang pictures. I didn't paint any rooms. This is not the home study um, meeting where they come into your house and they like inspect it. You know, she said some cursory professional things like, oh, your home is lovely. Of course she did. <laughs> but, you know, it was okay that our dog was loose. It was okay that there were some toys on the floor. It was perfectly fine that the walk wasn't shoveled super well. So please don't have a panic attack getting your house ready. Know that it's about an hour long. They ask very basic questions that if you're at this point in the process, I'm sure you can already answer. They write down very minimal things about you. Um, they don't need commitment. They don't need a specific plan of any kind from you. I would prepare a couple questions to ask the social worker just so it's not awkward when she asks if you have any questions. Um, I asked about things like the transition from being technically a foster parent to technically an adoptive parent. Um, I asked about the training hours because we took a couple and there's a few that you can do online and some that you can't. I asked about working between different counties. We live kind of in the middle of our state and this social worker drove down from about an hour away because she's the nearest physical office with a social worker in it. So she came to our house, but the children we are likely to adopt because of the demographics of our state are from an hour south of us. So that's three different counties now we're talking about. And so we talked about the logistics of adopting a child from a different county, but using a social worker from a third county yet, and how that would all play out. And it's actually very tangle free. The agencies involved really want the children to find homes so they are very willing to work together she works directly with um, an adoption worker from the county where the children are located they're willing to come to our home for about half of the things we do need to go in office for things like fingerprints and that type of thing of course we do um, the legalities of things but we can finalize our adoption in our home county we can do our home study interviews, you know, in our house, they will come to us to help us with that. And yeah, so that's what I know about the fostering or adopting pre-screening interview. <laughs> what happens after you send in your checklist, but before you begin your home study, it's nothing to be afraid of. It was not a big deal. Um, not a lot of sweat and tears lost over it, and we're really excited to continue the process. As soon as we get our paperwork, she said in about a week, I am going to fill that baby out. We are going to get our home study rolling so we can do this as soon as possible. Uh, we're hoping maybe by summer we'll have our home study completed, and then my husband is home. So if we do transition a child into our home, there are two parents here full time to um, just work on expanding our family. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. And you can email me at mostlycaffeinated at gmail.com. It's like this YouTube account is set up hooked to a Google Plus and a Gmail. You can visit my blog. There will be some updating at mostlycaffeinatedmom.blogspot.com about this process as we continue the journey. 
You can check out my Pinterest, mostly caffeine. You can check out my Instagram, mostly caffeinated. My Facebook page, mostly caffeinated. Any of that, uh, this will get sprinkled in along with the rest of my normal postings. Um, if you'd like to follow along with this journey or anything else that I share on YouTube, capsule wardrobes, minimalism, parenting, toddlers and babies, DIYs, groceries, you know, normal mom stuff, any of that, please subscribe. Um, hit the like button so I know you've seen the video and you'd like to know more about fostering and adopting. And leave any questions you might have in the comments. Or if you also are a fostering or adopting family, leave me a comment. Um, we can get together over YouTube, over the internet, and share our journeys. See you around. Bye.